بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ الدعاء The Prophet ﷺ said, Dua hu ibadah. The supplication is worship. So Ahlul Sunnah believes that by supplicating, when we supplicate, that supplication is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That that is an aspect of Tawheed. That is a part of Tawheed al ibadah. That is Tawheed of worship. Or Tawheed al uluhiyah, you can call it as well. So this is the Tawheed of worship. Why? Because you are doing an act which is affirming the worship of the creator of the heavens and earth. A dua a salat This is why we say that salat and dua cannot be to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you cannot pray to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you cannot pray to the Prophet Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam. And you cannot pray to Jibreel, the angel sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot pray to anyone or anything except Allah regardless the beauty of the creation we can't pray to the snow we can't pray to the trees we can't pray to the rock similarly to the way we can't pray to the NBA as I've mentioned those who are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the malaika the angels all of it is shirk all of it is polytheism with that being said Habatifillah in a hadith to let us know about the characteristics or about some of those whose dua is accepted and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those whose dua, whose supplication is accepted so that Allah will answer our dua amma in this dunya as either in this dunya or even in the or in the akhirah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the supplication either by preventing a calamity or giving you what you want or giving it to you in the hereafter and may Allah bless us with all three of those. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is a hadith in Sahih Tirmidhi. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, three supplications are accepted, meaning the supplication of these three people. There is no doubt in them being accepted. The supplication of the oppressed, the supplication of the traveler, and the supplication of the father against his son. Ruahu Tirmidhi. Ahabatifillah, this shows us the immense benefit that we can gain from Ahla Hadith and understand this Hadith. But we're going to keep it very simple and just from the Zahir of the Hadith, some of the benefits that we can gain. Some of the benefits, alhamdulillah, uh, alhamdulillah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with benefit. One of the benefits, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the dua of the oppressed. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it took a da'wah to madhloom. The Prophet said, fear the doubt, fear the, the supplication of the oppressed one. Meaning that people who are oppressed, even non-Muslims, the weak and the oppressed, they have a special position with Allah. Even though we belittle them. Even though we don't pay attention to them. Even though we don't give them their rights. But those who are weak and oppressed in this life, they have a special place with Allah Azza wa Jal. That they can supplicate to Allah. And maybe Allah will not only give them guidance, but will give them what they want against you if you're an oppressor. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Fear the, the, the supplication of the one Fear the supplication of the one who is oppressed. The second person the Prophet ﷺ mentioned was the traveler. So when you travel, supplicate often. A lot of times we forget. And make sure that you are traveling in Ta'atillah, that you're traveling in obedience to Allah. Don't travel because you want to go to Las Vegas and do the casinos. Don't travel because you want to go to a place where zina is so easy and it's very cheap. Don't travel because you want to do this filth or that filth, but travel in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe you have a business trip. Maybe you're going to see your family. Maybe you're going to 
visit far off relatives, maybe you're just going to another uh, land uh, to do da'wah Allah, whatever the case may be, make sure it's halal, make sure it's good. So that's a time when you can supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and give us guidance and rectify our condition and rectify the conditions of the Muslims everywhere and protect the Muslims in the West especially and, and around the world in general from the harms of those people who wish to do them harm. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Another benefit from this hadith, Ahabatu Fillah, is that the Prophet sallallahu then said, and the supplication of the father against his son. SubhanAllah, letting us know that the father has a great manzil, a great makan, a great place and position with Allah over his children. So that if a child angers their father and to the extent where he's making dua against them, this is a very serious matter. And that's they're one of the people whose dua is answered. So often, if you, if you are a father or you are a mother, pray often for the rectification of your children. Don't pray against your children. We hope their evil has not reached that extent, but pray for their guidance. And children, beware of being disobedient to your parents. Be obedient to them. Listen to them. Supplicate for them. Treat them with honor and respect because you don't want their dua to be against you. Those are just some of the benefits that we can gain from that hadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.